Hello, friends, and welcome back to r slash pro revenge. Today, we have another brand new set of crazy revenge stories for you. But before we begin, if you're new here, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so you don't miss a new video every single day. And our first story is, keep calling, enjoy your angry customers. The cell number I have was given to me, it was never used before. Everything was all well and good until a few years ago when I started getting random calls and messages on my voicemail. These calls were from my local area Home Depot store. I started calling them back, advising that they had the wrong number, but that didn't stop the calls. I even stopped by the store to let them know I had listed their regional manager or a person with authority as my number. No result. I tried to be nice. That didn't work. Here's what got results instead. A few days after I'd stopped by my local HD, I got a message on my mobile while I was in class mentioning a local store and an issue with staffing. I called the number back and told the person who called that I'd take care of the issue. A few days later, again, while I was in class, I see the same number come up on my phone and I bolt for the classroom door, excitedly answering the call in the hallway. It's Kathy at a local area store. Kathy tells me she's got a customer who says they've paid for their order, but she can't find it in the system. I tell her to send the customer with their products and I take care of it, carefully writing down the invoice number. I thanked Kathy, hung up, crumpled the paper with the invoice number on it as I returned to my economics class and tossed the paper into the trash. Not even a week later, another unknown but local number called me while I was at work. I hung up on the customer I was talking to and answered the phone. I was right to do so. It was a person from another local store, and she sounded desperate. She said that a pallet of pavers was supposed to be delivered by noon, but it was still in the store at 11.45. Don't worry, I'll take care of it, I reassured her and hung up. Over the next several weeks, I continued to get calls to approve things, which I always did. The final call was one from a store that was very familiar to me, an understaffed store with terrible service. The customer service desk called to ask me to speak with a customer. I told them I'll be in the store in 10 minutes. Ten minutes later, they call, and I say, almost there. Five minutes after that, a familiar number hits my mobile display, and I say, just walking in now. The last call I ever got from any HD store was five minutes after that, where the store associate yelled at me to come speak with the customer now. I quietly replied, I would, but I don't work for Home Depot. I hung up and laughed my butt off. And yes, in hindsight, I should have gone in and told HD to call their regional manager as I'd already paid for the jacuzzi, as I would be approving my own purchase, but hindsight. Awesome. Keeping with it for as long as you did totally makes it pro. And our next story. Make me quit the day before my birthday? Have fun getting fired. Quick background. From 2009 to 2012, I worked at a local quick lube chain. Oil changes in under 20 minutes, only using a trusted oil brand, etc. Going into this job, I assumed that's all I'd be doing. Quick oil changes in the occasional tire rotation. I was wrong. Working for this specific chain, it's all about the extra services and products to bang customers over the head for that they might actually need, but not for double the price of the local auto parts store. Maintaining a higher average sale every month was very important for keeping your job. And just for reference, the district managers wanted all service techs to have at least a $60 average every month. A basic oil change was only $35. On average, we would do anywhere from 20 to 50 cars a day, depending on the day of the week in a three-bay garage. It's also worth noting that if you maintained a high monthly sales average consistently, you were considered better than everyone else and put at the front of the line for promotions. It was also very common for someone with a high average to go from a tech to being a manager of their own store within a year. Yes, there was a high turnover rate. And yes, it was most certainly due to management consistently hiring drug addicts and not running background checks on people. Now starts my story. Over the course of my employment, I worked my way up to being a shift supervisor. This was one position below assistant manager, but I still held keys to the shop and had the alarm systems code. I opened and closed the shop regularly, and if I wasn't too busy with college, I could have been an assistant manager anytime I wanted. Managers I worked with loved me, and the district manager as well. It was honestly a fun job. I made a lot of friends working there that I'm still friends with today. But then we got a new manager. We'll call Johnny. Johnny was a jerk. Younger guy, 25 at the time, thought he was hot crap because he held an $80-plus sales average consistently since he started. 
Some people considered him a blessing because he helped other techs get their averages up too. Turns out he only helped them to make himself look better for raises and promotions. Here's a quick list of things Johnny did once he took over my store. Consistently disappeared while working for hours at a time to go walk around talking to the local college girls. Left every Saturday, the shop's busiest day, three to five hours early and would have someone else clock him out at the end of the day. I soon discovered he lived in the next town over from me and knew people that knew him. Johnny? A manager? Last time I saw him, he was so drunk he punched himself in the face till he bled. He dropped out of high school and ended up living in the park for a while. How'd he get that job with no diploma? He was bipolar, so screaming matches and temper tantrums became a regularity. He dumped a mop bucket filled with dirty water on the shop's floor as soon as I finished mopping it at the end of the day because I pissed him off somehow. He got people that he didn't like fired by making fake schedules showing they were off for three days straight when they were actually on the schedule to work, and when the employee didn't show up for the shifts, he would write them up in secret for a no-call no-show for each day, but didn't tell the employee until they came in for their supposed shift, and he'd fire them on the spot. If you want to argue, call corporate. And now my favorite thing he did often that I walked in on him doing? Remember how I said he held a $80 plus average? Well, he did that by ripping off elderly customers by lying to them about their cars, selling them services that either weren't actually getting done or weren't even needed, and selling parts that weren't even parts the car had or could even be replaced or just wouldn't be getting replaced. I discovered his little scam by getting stuck closing the shop so he could go home a few hours early. I decided to use the time to go through the day's invoices and found two huge sales on cars that I worked on. Only problem was, I didn't do any of the services on either of those cars. Hell, one of the invoices said the transfer case and rear differential were serviced. Those don't even exist on a 2011 Honda Civic. I then started watching the customers he would ring up and write down notes like car, time, and customer. At the end of the day, I'd find those invoices and get the internal numbers. At the time, I didn't think I'd ever use these notes, but 100% thought they would be useful, and it certainly was useful the day before my birthday. I requested my birthday off two months in advance by submitting a formal request form and handed it to the assistant manager who just started learning how to make the schedule and left a copy on Johnny's desk. The day before my birthday, Johnny and the assistant manager were looking over the schedule in front of everyone to see who was working the next day, and when he discovered I was off, he asked why. To which the assistant manager said, well, yeah, he requested it off a while ago. Didn't you see the form? Johnny replied with, yeah, I did. F that. Request denied, F word. You're working tomorrow. Got a problem with it? Turn in your keys now, because if you don't show up, you're fired. I promptly changed into my street clothes, took the key off my ring, handed it to Johnny, and left. He called me back a few hours later, begging me to come back, but I would still have to work on my birthday. I laughed for a few seconds and hung up. Now it's time for revenge. I got in contact with someone in the corporate office a few hours away, explained the situation that had occurred in the morning, and gave a few examples of what Johnny was doing wrong in the store. They asked if I could email them everything I had and promised they would look into it. The DM gave me a call asking if I wanted to work at a different store, but I turned it down, deciding it was time for me to move on. The job made me hate cars and people, so it was time to move on. I didn't hear anything about it for a while until the guy who's now my best friend calls me laughing hysterically with news about Johnny. Apparently, Johnny had been begging for a raise or a promotion to start training people to become managers so he would be out of the stores and customer service completely. One day, he got a call from the corporate office to discuss this. He was beyond elated and told everyone who would listen. Turns out that was a lie. They had him drive three hours away to sit down and review footage of things he's been doing going over those bogus invoices and listening to voicemails of customers calling and complaining about getting ripped off. He was immediately fired. Found out he ended up never finding work in the state again and actually had to move a few states away. Myself, I ended up in a different industry working for the state making way more money with a ton of benefits. Unless Johnny hit the lotto, the winner is me. And our last short story. Got to kick out a litigious B word. Okay, so I manage a sports bar. This woman sued us five or so years ago for slipping and breaking her leg. Her dad was known to stage accidents and fall all the time. Turns out the daughter had the same idea. To make a long story short, she won the lawsuit, 
The settlement was $25,000, which insurance paid. During the lawsuit, her dad keeps coming into the bar to inform us he's going to own the bar soon. Just being a jerk of a man with his daughter following him behind with a smirk on her face, so we kindly tell them to leave. He continued this for a week or so, then he finally quit. Well, cue to last week. I see this woman who looks an awful like the woman that sued us many years ago. All I could think was, man, this woman looks like an alligator. So did the lady who sued us. F, it's her. Come to find out it's her birthday, and she's up at our bar celebrating, so I walk up, put a wet floor sign right in front of her, and ask her if her name is... Let's call her Jen, because F it, that's her name. She says yes, and I tell her to get the F out. After her acting like an overprivileged bee, she leaves, sits in her car for a while, and as she pulls out, bam, hits a cop car. Anyway, she gets a DUI. I don't know if the stars aligned or baby Jesus was looking out, but it was a great night. Because F her. Hey guys, thank you all for watching the video to the end, and I'll see you in the next one.